Welcome back to your home garage and today I want to show you how to check your motor oil like a pro. Now checking your engine oil is probably the single most important thing you could do to maintain your engine because your motor oil actually serves many purposes. So first and foremost your engine oil actually minimizes friction by leaving a thin film on all the critical surfaces. It's also an effective cleaner as well by preventing contaminants from adhering to all those components. It acts as a cooling agent by minimizing heat on all the moving parts. It's a sealant and that dynamic sealant in locations like piston rings is incredibly effective. It dampens the shock by cushioning the blow of all those mechanical parts that come together. It's also a protectant against corrosion. And did you know that your engine oil is also a good transfer of energy because you are not able to compress engine oil? What it does is it's able to transfer that energy in such things like, like your variable timing. So as you can see, modern engine oils have many functions or jobs, especially as engines become smaller, produce more horsepower, increase fuel mileage, and help reduce emissions. So now that we know the purpose, let's go ahead and show you how to check that engine oil. And just before we end up checking the motor oil, one of the highly debated questions that always comes up is, should that engine be warm or cold? Well, the reality is that depends on your engine. In most cases, the engine should be cold. But in some situations where this is a Toyota RAV4, when you look in the, in the owner's manual, you'll actually see with the engine at operating temperature. And if I check my sports car, it also says the exact same thing as well. So there's no one size fits all. Should this be cold or should this be warm? The reality is check your owner's manual and see exactly what the best technique is. And then you follow those directions. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run this engine to operating temperature and then I'm going to shut it off and then we'll come back. So now that the vehicle is at operating temperature, and as I said before, you always have to check your owner's manual for this. Some cars you're able to check it while it's cold. Other cars, manufacturers recommend that you need to have it at operating temperature. This is a Toyota RAV4, so it's at operating temperature. So it's in park, of course. Let's go ahead and take out that key. Now that engine is incredibly hot right now. We don't want to go ahead and, and check the oil because we couldn't actually risk burning ourselves. So we're going to wait 10, 15 minutes, let the engine cool down and go through some of our other checks. So before we go ahead and we check the dipstick and the oil reading, what you'll want to do is make sure your car is actually on an even surface because if it's not and it's tilted either way, that engine oil won't sit properly or true in the in the oil pan and you won't get an accurate reading. So we're as flat as could be right now. So let's go to the next step. So now that the engine is nice and cool, we want to locate where the dipstick actually is in, in your engine bay. So in this particular vehicle, the Toyota RAV4 is actually yellow and it actually says engine oil on it as well. But sometimes they're actually a different color. If we look over here on this Honda, you'll actually see that it's an orange color. And on my Chevy, it's actually an orange color as well. And there aren't going to be that many dipsticks in your engine compartment. If it's an automatic, you might have one for your um, automatic transmission as well, but it should say automatic transmission on it. So let's go back over to our RAV4 here because this is the vehicle we're gonna be looking at. I'm gonna go ahead and set up the camera on a tripod and I'll show you exactly how to check the oil and the oil reading. So now that you know where your dipstick is located in the engine bay, we could go ahead and check the oil level. But just in case you can't locate it, just consult your owner's manual um, or a trusted website. So you can see I'm actually wearing gloves. You don't necessarily need to, but at the end of the day, you're handling a harsh chemical, so why not protect yourself as much as possible? And the, really the only tool you're gonna need is a lint-free cloth and a paper, piece of paper towel is perfect for, uh, for checking your engine oil. So let's go ahead. And since I just had this engine running, of course it's cool to the touch and it's off. You're not gonna take the first reading because that's gonna be inaccurate. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna clean that dipstick off. I'm just going to bring it a little bit closer here. Every dipstick is going to read or have similar um, similar marks on it. Sometimes it'll be a hash mark, sometimes it'll be dots like this one here is. This of course is the tip of the dipstick. So what you want your oil to be is anywhere in between here, but ideally as, as close to the upper mark as possible. 
If it's over that, that means you've got too much oil in the system, and that is, is a problem. And if you're under that southern mark or southern tip there, then you have to add oil uh, because that's also a problem as well. So let's go ahead and reinsert this dipstick. And this is the reading that we're going to take. So you just leave it in there for a second. Just take it out slowly so you don't fling the oil anywhere. And you'll see, I just changed this oil not too long ago, so it's pretty clean. And it actually starts to get dark right at the tip of that um, furthest or the high edge right there. So that's absolutely perfect. And if we look at the other side, it's exactly the same way as well. There is a little bit of oil just on the the dipstick here but that's because the tubing actually bends so you're always going to scrape a little bit of that oil on here so you look for where it starts to become solid and all the way down so that's an actual actually a perfect reading right there and sometimes it's good just to check it twice which we will in this particular case so we'll put it back in and then we'll just check it we'll bring it right back here and you'll see where the mark is right there so absolutely perfect so let's go ahead and reinsert the dipstick so one of the other things that you want to check for when checking your engine oil is also the color of it as well now I ended up changing mine not all that long ago so you can see it's pretty clear but if you were to touch it which I would also recommend just feel it for its thickness and just make sure you're not feeling any grime or grit in there and it's not milky or or thick right if it is and discolored and dark then that might be signs that you need to change it right away or if you feel any sort of grime you're going to want to go ahead and get that further inspected but that's not this particular case so we're able to go ahead and put this back and continue on until our next service so now you know how to check your engine oil like a pro. So just to reiterate all the key steps, consult with your owner's manual to see if you need to run your engine to operating temperature or if you could check it cold. This one here, we had to run it to operating temperature first and that's the way it's actually calibrated. After that, all the steps are exactly the same. Engine needs to be cool, of course off. The vehicle is on a level surface. Never check the first reading, clean the dipstick off and then check it second time and third time for consistency you're also going to want to check the oil as well and make sure it doesn't have any grit or grime and also look at the color and if it's really dark you might be due for an oil change if it has some grit and grime in it of course you're going to want to consult with a proper technician so hopefully you enjoyed this video and you found it beneficial if you did make sure you give it a thumbs up share it with a friend and of course hit that subscribe button and make sure you tune in next time to your home garage